Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, The first commandment is this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Genesis. Jacob got up during the night, took his two wives, his two women servants, and his 11 sons, and crossed the Jabbok River's shallow water. He took them and everything that belonged to him, and he helped them cross the river. But Jacob stayed apart by himself, and a man wrestled with him until dawn broke. When the man saw that he couldn't defeat Jacob, he grabbed Jacob's thigh and tore a muscle in Jacob's thigh as he wrestled with him. The man said, let me go because the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I won't let you go until you bless me. He said to Jacob, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, your name won't be Jacob any longer, but Israel because you struggled with God and with men and won. <clears throat> Jacob <clears throat> excuse me, also asked and said, tell me your name. But he said, why do you ask for my name? And he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, because I've seen God face to face and my life has been saved. The sun rose as Jacob passed Peniel limping because of his thigh. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> the psalm for this morning is Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. My help comes from the Lord. He will not let your foot be moved. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. So that the sun shall not strike you by day. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in. A reading from the second letter to Timothy. You must continue with the things you have learned and found convincing. You know who taught you. Since childhood, you have known the holy scriptures that help you to be wise in a way that leads to salvation through faith that is in Jesus Christ. Every scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for showing mistakes, for correcting, and for training character, so that the person who belongs to God can be equipped to do everything that is good. I'm giving you this commission in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is coming to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearance in his kingdom. Preach the word, be ready to do it, whether it's convenient or inconvenient, 
correct, confront, and encourage with patience and instruction. There will come a time when people will not tolerate sound teaching. They will collect teachers who say that they want to hear because they are self-centered. They will turn their back on the truth and turn to myths. But you must keep control of yourself in all circumstances. Endure suffering. Do the work of a preacher of the good news and carry out your service fully. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying to him, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? The Gospel of the Lord. to my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be always acceptable to you. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> On Tuesday morning, the angel of death was upon me. 
Um, it's not an angel of death, it's an angel of transition. It's the angel that takes us from one place to another. Uh, I felt it at two in the morning, I couldn't sleep, so I got up. And, uh, and I dressed accordingly. I put on, uh, I looked like a penguin. I put on the, the Roman tab collar and the black pants. And I had already intended to go see Beverly Sinclair, uh, my friend who had been in hospice uh, in Smith care for quite a while. And uh, I hadn't seen her since the hurricane. They got moved, we got moved, all that stuff. And so I was already intending to go see her when in the office we received a phone call from Susan, her daughter, asking that uh, if I might come this week because uh, she's now on morphine. We had talked about coincidences in the discussion group that had just happened. And I couldn't help but think this is an interesting coincidence that I had already expected to see Beverly and then I got a call asking me to come out to see her. And so instead of seeing her in the afternoon as I normally would and then head home, uh, I decided to go right then and there. I felt the pressure, if you will. So on the way, uh, I talked with uh, our Alter Guild director about uh, the upcoming Advent season. Uh, I talked with a good clergy friend of mine, Adrian, whose mother uh, passed away a year ago, and she, uh, I was checking in with her to see what it was like to celebrate communion uh, a year later. Her mom had died of COVID, even though she was uh, double, maybe triple vaccinated. And so uh, it was already an interesting day. Uh, I arrived, there's no parking, it's very typical with what happens at Plymouth Harbor. If somebody can do something about that, I'd appreciate it. And so I had to park on the yellow curb. I was given this little thing that says clergy and I put it up on my, uh, on my dashboard. I have yet to get a parking ticket with it. So, uh, so I did all that, rushed in. The person that normally isn't there wasn't there. So I had to check myself in and I was feeling uh, discombobulated. So dressed in black, I was carrying my last rites kit. It brings me comfort. Um, and I went in to do uh, what I was called to do, and that is to go say goodbye to my friend. I was walking down the hallway when um, a nurse in her late 20s of, uh, of Latina descent, um, she stopped me. And she looked at me and said, were you a target last night? <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry. Now again, I was thinking of Jan, I was thinking of my friend Adrian, I can write all this stuff going on, and a nurse stops me. Were you at Target last night? All right, so the night before, it was Monday. Uh, Monday is date night. Yay. Uh, it is also Sarasota Youth Orchestra night. And so uh, Elijah gets dropped off at the uh, performance hall next to the Van Weasel. And then Christy and I get to spend two hours by ourselves out, acting like adults, which is awesome. And we went to this, this fan, anyway, well, we, we had a wonderful time. And so when we picked up Elijah, we realized that he has a performance coming up and he needed black pants. Now, Elijah is growing an inch a month. Um, so mom, when you're here in Christmas, you'll be taller than me, just get ready for it. Uh, and so we had to go buy pants. Those of you that have kids, you understand, right? Especially boys, you can't keep them in pants. So, uh, so we went, we walked in, went right to the same section, found the right pants, tried them on, went through the self-check, and out. It was very quick. It was eight, whatever, that night. So here I am the next morning, Smith Care, uh, early afternoon, and this nurse stops me. Were you at Target? Um, yes, I, I was. <laughs> I was at Target last night. And I said, the one on Bayshore. She's like, yeah, the one in Bayshore. And I said, I've never been there before in my life. Uh, we went in for about 10 minutes. She said, well, I saw you. I saw you. What that did was it put my feet under me. I had been out, metaphorically speaking, I had been out in front of my feet. And she stopped me, asked this question, and then I centered myself. Um, I went in and did last rites with my friend, Beverly. It's one of the most beautiful things we do as the clergy the hardest things we do. So I, I told her I loved her, kissed her on the forehead, as I often do, and then I said, say hi to my dad. It was the last conversation she had. 45 minutes later, she was in heaven. 
I told her that there's a spot in heaven's choir and they were waiting for her. She was ready and off she went. One of the gifts I've been given is for people who do not believe to find me, to ask questions, and to be around me. They often ask for me to describe my faith. I, I don't know how to describe that period or that set amount of time. Um, and, and it didn't finish then. I went from there uh, to Sarasota Memorial, where our friend Terry Cobb had just uh, gone through very successful heart surgery. And with the same oil that I anointed Beverly for her to enter into heaven was the same oil I anointed him uh, to enter back into the kingdom of the living, if you will, and to restore his place in our own choir, which we will hopefully see him soon. The faith that I live is not one that I walk without sight because these are the things I see. These are the things I experience. These are the things I've witnessed. And not everybody feels that way. So for those of you who don't believe, for those of you holding, clutching, and grasping, I have a message for you. Now, to, to deliver this message to you, I have to talk about a heresy. And so, uh, you all don't seem to mind when I take a walk out onto a theological limb. Uh, this theological limb has been pruned and cut off and thrown in the fire, but I'm going to talk about it anyway. Uh, I'm going to talk about Gnosticism. Uh, so I don't know if you're familiar with Gnostics or Gnosticism. And if you are interested in Googling it right now, um, it looks like I'm saying uh, Gnostic or Gnosticism. Uh, it's G N O. S-T-I-C, Gnostic. It's uh, transliterated Greek, which is why it's pronounced Gnostic. And so the Gnostics, uh, they was actually a system of belief before the birth of Jesus, heavily influencing or making its mark on the church, certainly within the second century. Uh, largely, the Nicene Creed was written against it. And so I want you to hear the argument partner uh, for the Nicene Creed. I want you to hear uh, what the creed was talking about and what the other voices were out there saying. And I want to do it in a very specific reason, not to lift it up or say that it's the right way of believing, but to lift up a particular element that many of us struggle within our own faith. We struggle with earthquakes. We struggle with famine. We struggle with hurricanes. The things of this earth, the cruel and unusual way that the earth tends to do things to its people is largely a stumbling block. And so the, the Gnostics, um, so Gnostic or Gnosticism has to do with hidden or secret uh, knowledge, things that Jesus passed along that only a few understand. And so, uh, so that's where the word comes from. And the, the idea is, and you ready for the heresy? Get your seatbelt on, deep breathe. Okay, the idea is that an inferior God created the earth, and that God is cruel. That God requires sacrifice. And if you know anything about any of the other ancient religions around the globe, and how uh, they too saw God as a creator who was unfair and required sacrifices from time to time, um, that's where this idea came from. And then Jesus. Jesus is representing the kingdom of God, which they would refer to as love. And so you have this cruel, unfair kingdom where things die, where it's a dog-eat-dog, -dog, where there are earthquakes and famines and wars. And then you have the kingdom of love. And that Jesus was the pin that came down and pierced into this world and injected love into this sphere or into this realm and that his role is liberation to set the souls free and to bring them out. Now if some of that sounds like Christianity, right, um, the whole thing about uh, the, the inferior God who created all things, that that's where they really got in trouble with the church. And that's, you know, really where it runs into difficulty. So with the Nicene Creed, the first word, anyone? We. 
1928 uh, prayer book? Uh, I. But anyway, but we changed that. So uh, we, and the second word, believe, good, in the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, of earth, arguing against Gnosticism. Not just the creator of heaven, but the creator of earth. And so we believe that God created all those things. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we sit within this tension of love and destruction. And, and we as faithful followers need to sit with that. But my message to you is that God is love. If you have experienced love in your life, you have experienced God. If you've experienced a connection with a pet, a horse, a dog, a cat, if you feel that love, if you come home and your dog is jumping up and down and barking and just like so happy to see you, like unbelievably like, I thought you were never coming home and you know, panting and jumping up on you, you know that dog, yeah, love. This is our creator God, this is our love. If you've ever felt love for another human being, and if you have been loved or are loved, that is God's kingdom. That is God. And so if you struggle with various tenets of the Nicene Creed, if, you know, if there are other things about belief, if, remember love. And that is where God is. On Good Friday in 1964, in Anchorage, Alaska, they recorded the largest earthquake ever recorded in that region, in a region that has unbelievable earthquakes. So a 2.3 uh, earthquake will probably not wake you up. You probably won't even feel it. A 3.3, you'll feel a little bit. You might hear. It might wake you up. A 4.3 will wake you up. A 5-3 you will feel and you will hear, and there will be some, a little bit of damage. A 6-3 will take buildings down. A 7-3 will ruin entire communities. We have seen what a 7-3 does, especially when it happens in places like Iran. An 8-3 is unthinkable. In Anchorage, Alaska on Good Friday in 1964, they had a 9-3. It lasted three minutes. From the people that survived that earthquake, they all had a spiritual awakening because everything of the earth had been stripped and torn away. Everything that they hold on to, including gravity, just seemed to be focused against them. And it, three minutes is enough to say the Lord's Prayer about five times, right? I mean, and if you say it fast, you can do it 20. Uh, that it, it has this, this long-standing feeling when you're in an earthquake for that long. What held them together and what they remember from this is love. All the people that they love came to mind. All the places that they travel to and their home that they love came to mind. All of their pets, everything in that moment, it was just one thing, and it was love. Whether they were Inuit, whether they were Russian, American, they all felt the same thing love. That is what Beverly felt on Tuesday afternoon. Coincidences or not, right? The idea that uh, a nurse slowed me down to get me to breathe, to have me become centered before I went in to say goodbye. The coincidences of just having to know that today was the day. The feeling of the transition angel upon me, knowing that this was going to happen. Uh, all of those things, you can call them coincidences, but you cannot call love a coincidence. Love happens. Love is real. And as Paul says, it remains. 
the love that we have that is eternal, the love that we have of uh, family and friends from long ago, the love that we currently have and the love that we have in the future. It is ongoing, just like God. It is a one true thing on this earth that pulls us all together. And so it's not, for me personally, it's not a question of whether God exists because there are famines or because uh, there are these, these incredibly horrific military strikes right now uh, in Ukraine. Uh, it, it, that doesn't mean does God exist. What about a pandemic? And what about my friend Adrian whose mom died, right? Where is God and all that? God is love. God is constantly surrounding. God is what brings us uh, through love, through hurricanes, through pandemics, through deaths. It is love. And it is love that remains. So the love of God, may it be upon all of you. And especially for those who are struggling to believe. May that love pierce the soul and bring us into one loving embrace with God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now turning in your bulletin to page five, I invite you to stand as you're able. And together, let us say the words of our faith found in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. By the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray to God, our Creator, in the name of Christ Jesus, our Redeemer, making intercession for the church, the world, and for all people. Almighty God, you have planted the mustard seed of faith in us. We ask that you water it with your Holy Spirit, make its roots delve deep into your holy word and sacrament. Cause that seed to blossom and come to fruition, nourishing a hungry world with your son's forgiveness and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for your protection, guidance, and blessing upon your church. Make it steadfast in faith, courageous in witness, truthful in teaching and preaching, and gracious in service. Help us to invite our friends and neighbors to celebrate your grace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the persecuted church, especially in Nigeria, Pakistan, 
and North Korea. Keep your people steadfast in faith. Turn the hearts of their tormentors and bring them to repentant faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and for its elected and appointed leaders. Heal the suspicion, division, and hatred that weakens us. Bless everyone who works to restore integrity, justice, and mercy in our common life. Send your spirit abroad in the world so that people in every land may learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Bring your spirit and peace to Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be the strength and shield of all who risk their life in defense of others. Help them act with wisdom and integrity. When their work is done, let their homecomings be joyful, their bodies and minds be healed and refreshed, their service be honored, and their skills be used in new ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear and answer the prayers of all who cry out to you for help. Especially we pray for the needs of Downs the Fourth, Holden, Brian, Tyler, Barbara, Anne, and newborn David Jude. Grant healing and recovery for Georgiana, Peg Annette, Lisa, and Michael. Give peace and strength for those going through cancer treatments, especially Jane, Bill, Downs III, Victoria, Alex, Connie, and Douglas. Visit and comfort all who are under the care of skilled nursing, especially Timothy, Barbara, Kim, and Mary Ann. Be near to all who are in hospice care. Lord, in your mercy, prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for breathing your eternal life into all who have died, trusting in you. Especially we pray for the repose of the soul of Beverly Sinclair. May light perpetual shine upon her. Give each of us the daily bread we need. Bring us into the kingdom that you have prepared for all through the merits of your dear Son, so that in the power of the Holy Spirit we may praise, adore, and bless you forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most Most merciful merciful God. God, We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the the glory glory of your name. name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
So please be seated. Are there any birthdays this week? Any birthdays? Ellen, a birthday? All right. And Kathy, you're raising your hand, but I think that's to touch your earring. Yeah, okay, good. Be not it, next month. Wonderful. Hello. Hello. Can you tell everyone your name? Alan. And what makes you stand up today? Uh, nice church service. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was your birthday. It is. <laughs> okay, good. And what day? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And? And? What are you doing tomorrow? Well, uh, I'm going to praise the Lord for good health and, and uh, good friends. Amen. All right. Wonderful. <laughs> right. Good. All right. Can I have your hands? Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this, your servant. We thank you that you have given him yet another signpost, a reminder of your love, and your grace that runs all year long. And Lord, we ask that you bless him this day, tomorrow and the anniversary of his birth, and all the days of his life. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy birthday. Any other birthdays? Notice I didn't say birthdays and anniversaries. Because we have a very, first, any anniversaries whose names are not uh, Joan and Scott. <laughs> any anniversaries? All right, very good. Joan and Scott, come on up. Hello. Oh, wait. Hello. You can hold hands. It's more appropriate that way. Okay, good. Excellent. Good. He, was, he was running too fast. Come on up this way. Good. All right. So, uh, for those, Elijah, if you can point back this direction. All right, for those on Zoom, you know this handsome gentleman very, very well. And they're all waving and clapping right now, I think. So uh, there's, a there's a whole line of them, right. Uh, so Scott does our Zoom hosting. Uh, and so he actually has his laptop here in the church and we're running at two different times. And uh, we're also running YouTube at the same time. So that's kind of fun. Um, and nothing better than an Air Force General to do in retirement than to do these things. So yes, and Joan. You are part of Rotary, and you're yes. doing something. I'm going to have you do a, a simple plug before we get to the actual anniversary. Okay. So do you want to talk about Veterans Day? Sure. Cool. Um, we, uh, in the Rotary of Longbow Key, are very excited. We're holding our ninth annual Veterans Day celebration in person this year. It'll be at uh, the temple next door. Uh, we invite all of you and veterans, friends of vets, families of vets to come and join us. It's a fantastic program. We have a Tuskegee Airman. Uh, who's 97 years old, is our guest of honor, so we're very excited about that. And, and a major general also joining, and of course this general, uh, for our speakers of the program. And then we have music by Dr. Ann Stevenson Moe, and the vocal artist along with some other musicians. Uh, for those that know her or don't know her, she and her husband founded the Choral Artists of Sarasota. So these are professional singers, they're there for military songs, then we follow that up with a complimentary lunch um, that will be catered by Mission Barbecue. Everything is free, but I really encourage people, please sign up. There's a phone number, there's flyers out. Um, sign up, reserve your seat, because seats will be limited, especially at the luncheon. But we welcome all. So thanks for Wonderful. the advertisement. Excellent. Thank you. That's great. <laughs> that, was good. that is good. Uh, so Rotary meets in our parish hall. So we have uh, an ongoing commitment in uh, partnerships. So it's, mm -hmm. I'm very excited about that. All right. So what did you do a year ago? Got married. You got married. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Excellent. And what did you do a year ago? Uh, about the same thing. About the same thing. <laughs> Wonderful. Yes, we Wonderful. got married a year ago, here, a year and a day, well, a year oh, last week. Last Sunday. On the last ninth, Sunday. On the ninth. But we yes. were Zooming. So. You were Zooming, right, mm -hmm. yes. And if you're in person, you had to do push-ups. So it's good that we do. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> I can do one. <laughs> I know. That's all you need, just one year, that's it. So um, a year, I'm going to set this down. A year ago, we, um, I was honored to do the nuptials, and we will now do a blessing inside of the church. And so if I can have this hand like that, this hand like that, then that hand there, that hand there, and then this like this. Um, so the Urkers and uh, the Crawfords and the Marshalls were at the celebration. I have confirmed with everybody that we still remember the shrimp. My goodness, that <laughs> shrimp was amazing. And the bacon, man, you guys did a great job. All right, so let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you sent Jesus to show us the way of love and life. 
And the first miracle he performed was at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, where he turned water into wine. Lord, we thank you that he shows us how to turn our hearts to you and to one another. And we thank you for this union. We thank you that it is an expression of the sacrament of love to a world who so desperately needs to see it. Lord, we thank you and we ask that you bless them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may kiss the bride. Thank you. It's also one of the great things of being a priest. I just love that. Okay, so, all right. I don't know what else we had to... Oh, yes. Ethan, do you have an announcement for everybody? Excellent. Would you mind going to that mic? And it somehow got moved, and I think it did when we changed it. So we're going to put it back up this way. All right. So uh, speaking of natural disasters and uh, Earth's ongoing sickness, about a month ago, the Episcopal Church opened up applications for uh, delegates to be at the UN's uh, yearly climate conference. And so I applied, and about a week ago, I got news that I got into this delegation. And <laughs> so this, uh, this is an official UN uh, delegation. There'll be delegates from uh, our ecumenical partners across the, Judea, the Judeo-Christian faith, and, as long, and, and uh, also uh, our global partners across the world from the United States to to Iran, to Russia, I think they're coming. But uh, we're all gonna have, everyone's gonna be there. And I'm gonna be one of the, we're sending in person and virtual, I'm gonna be one of the virtual delegates. And our job is, as uh, the Episcopal Church is an ob official observer, uh, non-government organization observer uh, to the United Nations. And our job is going to be to observe what they're going to do and report back to the church and as well as uh, share God's love. Um, I think our in-person members can be do that a lot better than the virtual ones because uh, they're not gonna, they're gonna be waking up in the sunshine uh, because it's being hosted in Egypt. We're gonna be waking up around midnight to uh, attend the live uh, conferences. So, um, but it's gonna be lots of fun and I will have a report back when it's all done, uh, both a writing report and I'll also be speaking on my experiences there. And so we will have a discussion group where your paper will be discussed, uh, and so everybody will be able to do that. Uh, that'll be exciting. Yes. Um, is there a way that people can participate if they wanted to wake up at one in the morning and yes. jump in? I also forgot about that. Um, of course, the UN, uh, all of their, uh, a lot of their meetings will be recorded, and then you can also watch them live if you want to get up at the wee hours of the morning. Um, but you can watch the recordings and the Episcopal Church delegates, along with our uh, official representative to the UN, uh, Bishop Mark uh, Andrews, Mark Andrews uh, will be leading us. And we're also going to have members from the church's uh, creation care and uh, the Office of Government Affairs will all be, uh, will be working together on this. And we're going to have two uh, Zoom meetings uh, on uh, reasonable hours. Uh, for us here in the States to discuss before the conference about our job and our mission. And those are open to the public? And those are open, yes, we'll have two open to the public. Uh, I believe I'll send you the uh, links to the Zoom meetings so that they'll be in the tidings. And uh, I can send other information and resources if people are interested. Very good. And if, you, uh, if your delegation is looking for a Zoom host of all these things, I happen to know a guy uh, who does really well and doesn't mind waking up at one in the morning. <laughs> Good old Air Force coffee. So, <laughs> so, Ethan, that is fantastic. I'm very proud of you, of course, and I uh, look forward to hear more about it. So, good job. Thank you. Is there another anniversary? Uh, Tom and Heidi, has a, they have an anniversary. We got them last week. We did, yes. It's wonderful. So thank you, Paula, for uh, the reminder. Well, they're still celebrating, right. Yes. And Tom gives a thumb. Yes, they're still celebrating. <laughs> wonderful. Excellent. 
Very good. So um, our discussion group topic this week uh, has to actually do with faith and what we believe in. And so the article is on the gallery table uh, because Lynn reminded me to print it up and then she brought it over. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, and we have that going on. We are starting to collect art for our art sale. Uh, and I'm excited about that. The other thing I'm excited about is that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have our substitute organist today is Bob Woody. Welcome back, Bob. The treatment you did of our opening hymn was fantastic. I loved your accompaniment, especially the last verse where you did all bass pedals because Ed and I are basses. And so that was wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for being here. Um, hi, Kathy. How are you? Well, do you have any announcements for us? Well, just a few. First of all, I want to welcome everybody. It's good to see you. I want to invite you to our coffee hour. Uh, we have Jan Webb and who is doing it with Jan? Um, Judy Reed um, doing the coffee hour. So we want to thank you all. Um, secondly, um, if anybody would, I, we know our snowbirds are starting to come back and we're delighted. Um, and if anybody would like to stand up and share your yourself with us, so to speak, we would love that. And if there's any guests, we would love for them to stand up. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Wonderful. Hello. Talk about an anticlimactic uh, <laughs> <laughs> after these wonderful announcements and that wonderful homily. Thank you. Um, Hold the microphone closer to you. There we go. Okay. 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 Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm actually reintroducing myself. I came in a few times last winter when we were visiting our daughter, and now I'm anticipating a longer visit, so uh, I'm reintroducing myself. Last year, I introduced myself as, because I grew up in Cincinnati, I mentioned that I once played on the same softball team as Jerry Springer. <laughs> uh, but actually, I've been living in Pennsylvania, in the State College of Pennsylvania, for uh, many decades. Uh, so I was trying to think of something from Pennsylvania. Uh, but I can't. That's right. uh, not after last it, year. It's hard to beat Jerry Springer. Yeah. 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 But I can boast that I do belong to the longest continuously operating fantasy sports league on the face of the earth. <laughs> <laughs> That's My fantastic. Name's Jack. Jack, welcome. It's good to see you again. All right, so Lynn is over there. She has her glasses and her hair and this beautiful necklace. She can get you one of these things that has your name on it, and we would love to have that. So um, Lynn can set you up with those things. Anybody else would like to say hello? Welcome, Graham and Pam Toft. Wonderful to see you. Welcome back. And Fan, wonderful to see you. My favorite cat is still back at home, but you will have Claudia with you eventually. But Hopefully next, <laughs> wonderful, excellent, welcome. Oh, hi, Nancy Deming, if you don't mind standing. The Reverend Nancy Deming, welcome, thank you. If you can stay standing for a moment, she will be your preacher and your celebrant on Christmas Day, which is a Sunday, because I'll be at home with the boys' opening presents. And so Nancy will be our preacher and celebrant that day. So thank you, Nancy. <laughs> Yay. Did I get everybody? One last thing. I have some uh, choir, some very exciting news. Right? Ready. Ready. Okay, good. <laughs> Excellent. Um, uh, in consultation with the choir and with them telling me exactly who they wanted as our next music director, I then sent out a letter of agreement this week, uh, written up by our very own chancellor. Thank you, Laurel. Uh, and I received it back, so now we are official. We have hired uh, David Stastny as our music director for All Angels. So uh, David's not here. You can make an applause. He'll be watching later anyway. So hi, David. <laughs> Welcome. Today he's breaking the bad news to his congregation, and so I've been praying for him because I know that that's a difficult thing to do. He will be joining us starting October 30th. And so um, I don't know who our substitute is next week, um, but then David will be here. He is exceptionally skilled at um, leading choirs, especially choirs of a particular age. He is quite good at uh, bell choirs and coordinating bell choirs with the choir itself. Um, 
He is in very enthusiastic and quite well knowledge in all things liturgics and with music. Uh, my only concern is that with Dale and me, I was always the giddy up, and Dale was often the whoa, right, to keep us going the main way. Um, I've had to tell David a couple times to pull back, so I'm really excited about what we'll be doing. Um, and I'm very excited to work with him. The choir, you were all very excited to have him as well. Yes, yay. A uh, choir, it was not easy to lose our friend Dale. Uh, it was not easy to, um, to continue doing what we do. And uh, especially in the face of, uh, of changing the new organist each week and asking you to interview and at, you know, all of that, singing through the summer, doing all the things that you do. Uh, you, to me, are the rock stars of the church. I am so pleased to serve with you and to have you here. And so thank you for supporting me and for supporting the music ministry during this time. I'm very excited about our future. So ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our choir. Yay. Excellent. And now for a big group hug. <laughs> so let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
turning to page 8 in your bulletin. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and all those you love forevermore. Amen. <laughs>